Greetings and welcome to a new video about power electronics. In this example, we'll discuss the flyback converter in the discontinuous current motor operation. It will be a design example. We'll of course see everything step by step in our calculations and verify these in MATLAB simulating simulations. Now, before we jump to our design example, let's first discuss the flyback converter briefly. This is already done actually in the previous video I posted in great detail. Also for this video, we will briefly go through the operation of the flyback converter. First, let's discuss this uh, diagram, this figure here. We have this input voltage Vs, which is our DC voltage. We have here the switch and there is here the transformer and the diode and the capacitor and the resistor load here. Now, the diode here is there to create this current flow in the secondary winding and secondary part. And there is also this capacitor to pick up the ripple voltage and the load is then modeled by this simple resistor R. This is the circuit we can use as the flyback converter, but for the actual calculations, we will use actually a model of the transformer, which is actually shown here in a dashed uh, pink uh, region. Again, our input, the switch, and now you see here the primary side of the transformer and the secondary side of the uh, transformer. One important note, we have a dot here, which means that the current is flowing there. And in this dot here, the current is leaving there in the secondary side. So you see also that the V1 and V2 are flipped. So they are not at the same polarity here. You see also the diode, the resistor and the capacitor currents are given. And we have an addition to model this transformer in more detail. The LM, which is our magnetizing inductance. And this is an important parameter we'll use in our design. Now we can now discuss the two operations. First, the switch close that's actually shown here. We have now here the short, and now you see also the operation. If this is of course shorted, that means the Vs is across this complete LM, and also across this primary winding. And since this is the plus voltage, that will be then the voltage between this node to that, and that means actually the diode will be reverse biased, that means the connection here will be opened. So you will have a voltage, but there will be no current here in the secondary winding, so that means in the I2, there is zero here. It means also why I1 is also zero. That means the source current here is also equal to the magnetizing inductance current. That's the first situation for the switch closed. Now, when you have the switch open, then you have the situation like so. Now, since there is a magnetizing inductance energy in this LM, this current will be then going through that. Why? Because there is a switch open here, so there will be no current flow anymore here in this path. So every current from the LM will be then also processed in this primary winding. And that will be also reflected the secondary winding and that will be then like so. So this is all discussed in great detail also in the previous video. So I will actually stop here and then continue with our next discussion. Now, one note, the operation of the flyback converter is really similar to the buck boost converter. So when the switch is closed, the energy is stored in this inductor. LM, and when we open the switch, that means we have now the transfer from this energy stored in the LM to the load via, of course, this transformer. So that's the whole operation actually in briefly form. Okay, let's now also look at the switching analysis in more detail. Now, since we of course discussed the DCM, which is this continuous current mode, we can focus on that part only. So this is this continuous current mode operation. We have again our transformer in the shorted, which is the switch closed and switch open. Two operations. Now when you have the discontinuous current mode, that means your inductor current, this current IL sub M, is some part zero. That's actually shown here. Now when the switch is closed, you can have actually a similar behavior as the continuous current mode. So the magnetizing inductor will increase linearly. You see actually this part. This is also what we see in the continuous current mode. And then the formula was given by this expression where you have the DC input voltage, the duty cycle we choose, and our T, which is our period of the switching. So one over the T is then the switching frequency and our inductance here, which is the model of this transformer. Since the current starts at zero, the maximum magnetizing inductor current is also given by this. So you can also see that this is also reaching that maximum value. And also this delta ILM will be also our maximum current in this case. Now when the switch is open, 
That means the magnetizing inductor will then decrease to zero before actually the switch again uh, closes. So that means actually the, for the next cycle, because this is already reaching zero before actually we reach the period T. The maximum value of this inductor current is here and the maximum value of the source current is here. And you can see the IL max is also equal to I source max. And we will use this later in our analysis to determine the relationship between the output voltage and the input voltage for this flyback converter in the discontinuous current mode. And again, as said before, IS max is equal to ILM max. And this is the delta ILM, which is also equal to the maximum current of this inductor. Okay, let's bring it here and then move on to the next analysis because we need to know what the relationship is between the output voltage and the input voltage. So we can use a power balance. In an ideal case, we can say the source power is equal to the output power, load power. And that is then source voltage times the average source current, which is then actually from this figure, we can determine the average source current is equal to the output voltage squared over the resistor, which is our load. So the average source current IS, we can determine that actually from this plot. So the area under the triangle here, this triangle, the pink, tri pink triangle, should be then divided by the period T and that will then give us the average source current. So in full detail, we can say that area under the triangle waveform divided by the period, that will be our average source current. Now more mathematically, we can say the triangle is of course calculated by 0.5 times the base times the height that's actually shown here. So this is the height IS maximum and this is the, the base length, which is the delta D, I mean DT and you divide by the period, which is T. And then you have this one, since this is IS maximum is also equal to ILM maximum, which is also equal to the delta ILM. And that's all shown here. And now we can use this from here and you can see that we lose some T here. And also we have an D squared we can bring this to and the LM in the denominator. We have this nice expression for our average source current. Okay, now using now the power balance, we can say, just substitute here the IS, so replace by this, and you have this expression. Now what do you see? You actually have now here VS squared. That's actually shown here. And we can now do the cross multiplication. So the two times LM VO squared is equal to the VS squared D squared T times the R. That's this one. And I will now have an expression for the VO in terms of the other parameters, like the input voltage, Vs, the duty cycle, etc. So you divide by the two LM that's actually shown here. And you now take the square root of the left and right hand side. But if you, before you do that, you can also say, I would like to have my expression in the switching frequency, so not in the switching period. So you can also write it like that. But first, we can also take the square root. So the Vs squared and D squared will be then just dVs. That's of course the square root of the square is just the, uh, the quantities product. And then the square root of this expression here. Again, since we know the switching frequency is one over T, we can replace that by this expression. And you have now your expression, which is different than the expression for the continuous current mode. All right, let's now go to our example objective. We have the flyback converter circuit given with the following data. We have the input voltage, Vs, 40 volts. The duty cycle we have selected here in this example is 0.6 or 60%. The low resistor is 20 ohms, so this one. And we have for the modeling, the magnetizing inductance as one millihenry. And the transformer ratio N1 over N2 is four. That means this is four times larger, has four times larger turns ratio turns than this N2. And the switching frequency for this situation is 20 kilohertz. So that means this switch will then have a switching frequency of 20 kilohertz. And in this example, we would like to determine the operating mode of this circuit using the values given. Load voltage or the output voltage VO. And finally, also the load current IO here or IR, which is our resistor current. Okay, how do we tackle this problem? Let's look at the calculations. The operating mode, for that we need to use the definition for going in the continuous current mode. That means the inductor, magnetizing inductor value, 
must be larger or equal to this value. We have discussed this before in the previous example. Now you see here the resistor, the duty cycle and the switching frequency. But also we see here the ratio of this transformer turns. So we have the N1 over N2 here also. Now we have the necessary data actually to calculate this. So we will do that. Again, this is for continuous current mode. So if your LM we have selected here is lower than the minimum required value here, we will be in the discontinuous current mode. So let's calculate that. So if I equate that, that means the 20 for the resistor and 0.6 for the D duty cycle and here 20,000 for the switching frequency FS and N over, N1 over N2 will be 4. So if I do that, you get here 1.28 mini Henry's. Well, if I look at the data, I have here 1 mini Henry, which is which means actually that we have a lower value than the minimum required here. So that means our magnetizing inductance is lower or less than the minimum required for the continuous current mode operation. So we have discontinuous current mode for this circuit. Okay, that is for question A. Now we'll go to the question B about the load voltage. Now we know in the discontinuous current mode, the load voltage was given. We have discussed this in great detail in the previous discussion. We have this expression. So we can now substitute here the values for the duty cycle and the other parameters. You see them all here. And when you do that, you get here 16.97 volts, or so approximately 17 volts. This is, by the way, larger than the situation for the continuous current mode. Why? Because we have here the specifications as we had it in the previous example of the flyback converter, exact same. The only change is actually the resistor. So the resistor went from here 5 uh, ohms to, in this case, 20 ohms. So we changed that and you see here the almost 17 volts. So again here as summary with a load re resistor we have discussed in the previous example of 5 ohms we were operating in the continuous current mode and then the load voltage was given by a different formula you see here the ratio of the turns are then in the picture here for the formula but then you get here exactly 50 so by making actually the resistor larger you go in a different operating mode and you also change your output voltage here in this case to almost 17 volts. So the effect of the load resistor in more detail. So we can rewrite this formula here for our operating mode. We just discussed in question A. And we can then express that equation such that our R is isolated. So we can do that. So we do LM times 2F is equal to the resist and also the N1 over N2 actually also here, but then flipped because you divide them by it will be then R times 1 minus the quantity squared. And I would like to now isolate the R. So that means the, the left side will be then divided by 1 minus the quantity squared. And that's actually shown here. And now you have here the resistor value, which should be then the minimum value for, in this case, you have, or maximum value, I should say. So R must be equal to or smaller than this value. Well, let's calculate uh, this. So this is then 2 times 20,000 for the switching frequency, 10 to, times 10 to the power minus 3 for our LM, and 1 over 4 because the N2 over N1 will be then the reverse of N1 over N2. That's 1 over 4 squared quantity, and then again the duty cycle in this formula. You get a 15.625 ohm. So this is the maximum allowed resistor in order to stay in the continuous current mode. This 5 ohm was definitely lower than this value, but the 20 ohms here is larger than that value. So we are indeed again proving that we are in the discontinuous current mode. Okay, so this is continuous current mode and then going above that, we then, I mean, continuous current mode for the first case and this is then discontinuous current mode. Now the final one, which is the load current, that is actually pretty easy. We can use ohms low since we know the output voltage, we can use the resistor and then calculate now the output current, which is then 848.5 milliamps. All right. Now let's now look at the simulation results in the Simulink circuit. This is a circuit for this circuit we have discussed. In the Simulink, you see here the voltage input, the magnetizing inductance for the model, the linear transformer, which has now the turns ratio for 
over 1. So this is 4 times larger in ratio in turns than this one. We have here the switching, the switch action ideal switch and we have the pulse generator which generates this 0.6 as the duty cycle. The diode is here and there is a capacitor selected here as 100 micro. This is by the way will determine the ripple and the output when in this case there is no specification for that so we just select here as some value and here the resistor of 20 ohms. We also see here the measurements for the mean values so we have the average inductor current average load voltage and average load current and also the average source current. So we have calculated two of them, the average load voltage and the average load current. So let's see them. The average load voltage here in the simulation is 16.96 volts and we have here 16.97 volts. So a very small difference, so this is perfectly fine. And here the average load current which is then 0 0.8482 and we have here 0 0.8485. So again a small different between the calculator, so this is perfectly fine. Okay, let's also look at the plot. I start first with the transient response. This is the full picture. You see here the source current, the blue one. The pink one is the load voltage. The green one is load current and the inductor current is given in red. You see also that it's not really visible. I will zoom in shortly that this is operating in the discontinuous current mode and you see also why. But let's first see that we have indeed almost 70 volts for our load voltage because this goes that way, it's having some peak, so overshoot and then settles down and goes to this is 20, so this is then, and this is 10, so it is above the 15, it's for 16, so it's approximately 70 volts also as we see it in the plot. And here you see this is almost 0 0.85 mini, 85 amps looking at this plot, but we will see that shortly in more detail when we zoom in. Okay, let's now look at the steady state response. That's here the zoomed in version of that transit response. You see the source current again, the load voltage, load current and the inductor current. Let's start first with the inductor current. You see indeed that it is reaching the zero before the next cycle actually starts with the switching. So it's also the part where we have this zero current and that is the typical characteristics of a discontinuous current mode. What do we see? We also see the minimum value of this inductor current, which is almost zero. You see here a very small value, just rounding off error actually in the simulations. And we see also here the maximum of 1.2 amps. So the peak peak here of this is 1.2 amps. We also see, we have discussed that, that the source current and the load, I mean the inductor current are exact same in the peak peak value. So again, the maximum is 1.2 amps and the minimum is zero. And if you look at the source current, it has also zero, almost zero, just very small value here. And the maximum is very close to 1.2 amps. So you see that indeed these are exact same as for the inductor current. Now we can also calculate this peak peak inductor current, which is delta ILM. Using this formula, we know 40 volts, the duty cycle 0.6, the 20 kilohertz for the switching frequency and the LM in our model of one milli -Harry. and it will also result in 1.2 amps. So that's indeed as we have it here. So that's all. Alright, that was our example considering the flyback converter, specifically in the discontinuous current mode, and we have discussed how we can determine the output voltage relationship in terms of the input voltage and also the other parameters given in this example. We have also discussed the simulation results and checked our calculations for this example. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and share these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.